was almost 1,700 meters. We did in the first round. Uh, we definitely uh, hit mineralization uh, up to 2.4% uh, uh, lithium um, in, in one area and a couple areas where we got it into the 1.4, 1.7 uh, range. And uh, it certainly warrants uh, another drill program. Hello, welcome to Assay TV. Today, I'm joined by Harry Barr, who is the chairman, CEO, and founder of New Age Metals. New Age Metals have a portfolio of lithium and PGM projects across North America, including the multi-million ounce River Valley Palladium project in Ontario. Now, that project has a pre-feasibility study on the way, expected out later this year. But today, we're gonna to be talking about their lithium project, in Manitoba. That is the Winnipeg River Pegmatite project where maiden drilling has been underway. Uh, Harry, great to see you uh, today, joining us from your beautiful house there in Maui. Um, tell us, to start things off, a little bit about um, your land holding position there uh, at Winnipeg River and the targets you've been looking at. Thanks for having us on, Leo. Yes, in 2016, I um, hired a consultant who, um, there is a mine that we surround and um, was one of the reasons that we were able to kind of pick up a big position there called Tanko. And it's a very large pegmatite and it's been in production since 69 and it's produced, it's actually, we we're just talking to management the other day, it's probably the only producer of lithium again, they just turned on their lithium circuit a couple months ago. Um, and it'd been on and off for many years, but it also produces uh, uh, tantal tantalum and cesium. So with the help of the past exploration manager of the project from 216 to present, we're still acquiring more ground. We put together the largest land base in what they call the Winnipeg River Pegmatite field. It's about 120 to 160, 70 kilometers kind of north east of uh, Winnipeg, road accessible. So good area to be working in, a good province to be working in. And uh, we have seven projects at this point. There'll be more announced over the next few weeks, but um, we put together quite a large land package, uh, close to about 14,000 hectares so far. Mm. And I believe there's sort of three drill ready targets, but the, the recent drilling was at your lithium two uh, target. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, your, your maiden drilling campaign there. Yes, we, um, one of the projects we had is we named lithium two. It had some drilling, Leo, done in the late 40s, if you can believe that, early 50s. It was a bit of a push on in those days looking for lithium, I think more for its qualities for Greece at the time. Um, and um, so several of the local properties were drilled. This had some old drill information on uh, that was uh, stored basically on the uh, government uh, files. And uh, so we, we acquired this uh, project from a junior mining company. I believe it was 217 or 218 and um, did some surface work on it. Um, it had an old non 43101 resource of about 600,000 tons at about 1.4%. We bound up to 4% uh, lithium on surface and some of the work we'd done. Um, in the fall of Last year, we signed an option joint venture agreement uh, with a company called Mineral Resources. They're the fifth largest lithium producer in the world, about a $9 billion market cap company out of Australia. And it's the first time they come to Canada. So they're funding uh, uh, this and basically the development on our other properties. Uh, they can earn up to 75% in three tranches. The first one is uh, $4.4 million dollars. Uh, over 42 months, uh, 400,000 as cash payments, and the rest is money in the ground. We'll earn them 51%. We're the field manager, so we, uh, we, we uh, along with our consultants, help uh, do the work in the country. So the project was funded by them. It was almost 1,700 meters we did in the first round. Uh, we definitely uh, hit mineralization uh, up to 2.4% uh, uh, lithium. Um, in, in one area and a couple uh, couple areas where we got into the 1.4, 1.7 uh, range. Um, and uh, it certainly warrants uh, another drill program there to try and build up the resource. Um, so uh, put about 11 holes down today. 
Mm. And in terms of, I mean, for our viewers who are less familiar with the lithium uh, business, um, what sort of grades are typically do you typically look for in a sort of economic, potentially economic deposit of uh, a payment? Yeah, I part? think in, in a good jurisdiction, anything that is uh, one per one percent or higher uh, seems to be uh, something that can be put to production. Absolutely. And and you, you, a lot of your drilling was focused on the Eagle pegmatite, but then also you did some drilling into this um, FD5 uh, pegmatite. Yeah. What, 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 what's, look, what's it looking like over there? Well, um, it looks like it needs some more drill holes. We have to, uh, they're certainly going to recommend that we drill a, a couple deeper holes and kind of follow the mineralization uh, uh, down to depth there. Um, it, it's uh, more a new discovery, it hadn't been drilled in the past, so we're excited about it uh, and just really getting going. I only had a couple of holes in it. Absolutely. And, and as, we, as I mentioned at the beginning, there, there are sort of three uh, drill ready targets. What are your plans for further uh, drilling across the whole property? Well, we're in the middle of it, just had a meeting yesterday and should have approval, I would hope, in the next five to 10 working days of our 2022 budget. It'll be somewhere in the range of about a million six. So it'll be our biggest year on the project. And it will be uh, drilling a second round on the lithium two that we spoke about. It'll be drilling a first maiden round uh, on what we call lithium one, uh, which has about 40 pegmatites we've identified. And again, numbers on surface of up to 4%. Um, and so we'll be drilling uh, at least uh, 1500 to 2000 meters there. And uh, the third project doesn't have a drill permit yet where uh, we need to get back in the field this summer and finished an archaeological study um, for our, our native partners and get that done. And then we can get the drill permit finalized there. So I would expect it should be approved by late summer. Um, the other thing we did last year is we spent about $300,000 on geophysics and on five of the seven properties. So we've identified quite a few areas that we need to put geological boots on the ground and get out there and do some surface work this summer and hopefully bring one or more of those other projects up to the drill stage too. Excellent. Um, let's talk a, bit, a little bit about your Palladium uh, project there, uh, the, the, the River Valley uh, project. Um, in pre-feasibility, pre what, what, what's the progress of that at the moment? Well, um, first of all, it's it's close to a four million ounce uh, resource in three different categories. It's uh, one of the largest undeveloped deposits of its kind in North America. It is about 65% palladium. Uh, we do have platinum as a secondary metal and then copper and we have some gold and some nickel. So it's a polymetallic, but primarily a, a palladium project, which is quite unique in North America. There's only a handful of them. Uh, there's only one producing palladium mine in Canada and one in the US. So uh, and the other most important thing about the project is we're located 100 kilometers from the biggest metallurgical complex in North America in Sudbury and um, all road miles uh, there. And most importantly, Sudbury as it's by, as a byproduct to it's primarily nickel copper produces PGM. So both the big companies there can take our concentrates and proof in the pudding there is the only producer in Canada the EO ships its concentrates almost 800 kilometers uh, from northern Ontario to there and has done so for over 22 years. So we're only 100 kilometers away. So just a great place for a junior mining company to do business, road access, and access to everything from drilling companies, assay companies, engineering companies, etc. So even though we have lots of exploration upside in the project, it's 16 kilometers of mineralization. Only about 60% of that's been drilled, by no means all drilled out. 40% uh, remains undrilled. We've got quite a few new targets that need to be drilled. And we've never drilled anything at depth. Uh, we're still in mineralization. And at, at this point, it seems bottomless. Uh, we're only down to about 500 meters. And just as a, a side uh, uh, note, the only producer in Canada was an open pit like we are going to start and now is underground and, and doing quite well. And, and the mines in Sudbury that are producing PGMs are underground and getting deeper and deeper and deeper because they're old. So there's great potential at depth. The pre-feasibility study is about halfway done. It's about a $4 million study that we should have results out by the end of September if all goes well. And uh, we've got basically uh, three engineering companies, an environmental company and a metallurgical company helping us do the study. Fantastic. And as I mentioned, uh, interesting times for the palladium market. Uh, what's your take on, on where, the, where the palladium price is, is heading? 
Well, as you know, it was heading uh, up and did exceptionally well. And then when this uh, debacle started in Russia, uh, Russia produces most of the palladium the world did in South Africa. And so with sanctions and, and things like that in place, I, I don't know how long that's going to last, but I imagine the way Russia is treating the world, it will last for a long time. Um, a lot of cars, as you know, last year uh, just didn't get produced and were wanted. Uh, most of our car companies in Canada that are selling retail have no cars on the lot here yet. So there's a tremendous backlog. And, and I think uh, the fact that they can't, we won't be able to get Russian metal is going to keep the price of palladium at a, you know, at a very lofty uh, height here for uh, quite some time to come. Mm. I guess these geopolitical uncertainties sort of highlight the need for you know, having projects in safe jurisdictions, yeah? Well, that's right. Both lithium and, and, uh, and PGMs, as you know, uh, as I, I was quite surprised, I didn't even know that the company Sino Mine, which is a Chinese company that bought the Tanko Mine that uh, is, is um, very close to us, was producing in a small way. They're actually looking at a feasibility to almost uh, take the production up about 10 times and, and might even have extra capacity in the area, which would be great for a company like ours that might have uh, deposits very close to them. But, you know, that's the only thing that's happening at this point uh, in Canada. There really is no lithium production and very little in the U.S. And, of course, that's where all the car companies are. So, uh, uh, yeah, having both PGMs and lithium in, in North America is a good thing. Absolutely. Um, to go back to your lithium project, then, to wrap things up, I mean, when what's the sort of situation regarding getting more drill rigs out there and, and getting more news flow coming from the site? Yeah, we're getting close, Leo, to spring breakup, and that's about the only time you can't do work there. So I would think that uh, we'll get our budget approved here in the next week or two. We are working at things behind the scenes that we can do uh, and get out in the field by mid-May and, and probably go right through the end of October. And in that period of time, at least two drill programs would happen. A lot of boots on the ground on these geological anomalies and uh, try to bring that third uh, property up to the drill stage here before fall. So lots of work to be done, and it'll be our biggest budget on the lithium projects that we've had to date. Excellent. Busy year ahead. Well, uh, thank you very much for joining us today for that update uh, from Harry Barr of New Age Metals. Thank you, Leo.